cations and anions. Okay, let's give them a quick definition. Cations are positively charged ions. And anions are negatively charged ions. I'm actually going to write this with a lowercase a only because I want to my n to stand out. And ions are negatively charged. Some people prefer cats and just say, I like cats. They're positive. Okay, so I mean, I generally go with the N in anion being the one that stands out for me. It's remembering which one's positive and which one's negative. Okay, so we're going to draw a table here. And I'm going to look at the ones that you need to know about. Let's just continue that the whole way up. Okay, first up, let's do some calcium ions. Um, CA2 plus is what calcium ions are. So what do you need to know about calcium ions? How are they involved in biology? Well, they cause vesicles to fuse with membranes. So synapses is the classic example there. So synapses or exocytosis. They can also activate enzymes. So they activate ATPase in muscle contraction. They're actually a cofactor in that. A cofactor, if you're an Edexcel student, you don't really need to know what it is, so don't worry about that. OCR students, you do. Basically, it's, yeah, it's an inorganic ion that increases the activity of an enzyme, is my off-the-top-of-the-head definition of a cofactor. I'm going to do all the ions that you Edexcel and OCR students both need to know about, and then we're going to end the video, and I'm going to finish off with the extra ones. So, magnesium is a cation you both need to know. Magnesium is also Mg2+, plus. it's to do with where it is in the periodic table. Okay, what is magnesium involved with? Well, it's absorbed from the soil by plants to make chlorophyll, so it's an important molecule in absorbing light during photosynthesis. It's usually absorbed actually by active transport because it's not that common in soil, so plants work quite hard to grab it out of the soil against the concentration gradient using ATP. Okay, now we're going to jump over and do the other common one that you all have to know about. So that is nitrate. Nitrate is an ion. There's nitrites and nitrates. If you need to know the nitrogen cycle, it's NO3 and it's a single negative charge. The reason this is so important is because this is the soluble form of nitrogen that plants use to make their anything that contains nitrogen. So proteins, amino acids, DNA, RNA, all of those things. Okay, that's where the Edexcel students leave us. They're the only three they need to know. There's a few more for you OCR students that you've got to get your head around as well. Okay, so next up, sodium ions. These are Na+. You're probably pretty familiar with them by now. Good news is you're so familiar that you don't have to do too much learning of them. Okay, so we do some nerve impulses and water regulation or osmoregulation, the water potential of the blood.
That's that. Okay, so next up, potassium ions. Potassium ions are K+. Plus. They are required in nerve impulses is all you need to know about them. Next cation is hydrogen ions. H plus or a proton, another term for that. Okay, so these guys are kind of everywhere. They control the pH. So the more loose or free hydrogen ions you have floating around the place, the more acidic something is. Essential for creating these proton or hydrogen ion gradients. They're in photosynthesis and oxidative phosphorylation, and they are essential for making ATP. So if you're revising and you've, you know about respiration, then you'll know oxidative phosphorylation is the stage where you build up the proton gradient in respiration. And last but not least, one that you actually might not have come across as much throughout the course, and that's ammonium ions. Now, these guys are NH4+. This is another type, another soluble form of nitrogen that's also used by plants. You can assume the same as this. Um, it's just a different form of absorbable nitrogen. Anything that a plant has, any molecule a plant has that contains nitrogen, it can absorb ammonium from the soil and then make it from there. Okay, let's move over to some of the anions. So we've got hydrogen carbonate ions. These guys are HCO3 minus. So this is going to be used to balance or buffer the pH of the blood because it can absorb some protons yeah, and it can then reduce the acidity of the blood. We've got sodium. Sodium's kind of natural partner is chloride because we have sodium chloride is table salt. Cl minus. Okay, so OCR students, you need to know that this is a cofactor with amylase or in amylase. Remember, cofactor is that inorganic ion that increases an enzyme's activity or makes an in and make an enzyme work. Sometimes it won't work without it. Some depends on the cofactor. Also, it's involved in osmoregulation. It's controlling the water potential above in the loop of Henle. Only a couple more. Okay, so phosphate ions. These are PO4 3 minus. Well, it's needed to make nucleotides, so RNA and DNA. We also need it to make ATP. So nucleotides are like the monomers, basically, that build up. RNA and DNA. Um, in fact, let's just carry this on as a list. It's nucleotides, it's required to make ATP, it's required to make, I'm just going to pull that out, phospholipids, 
We also need to make triose phosphate, TP. This basically means it's required for respiration and photosynthesis. And the last ones we need to know about are hydroxide ions, which are OH minus. So these also control the pH of things. Uh, so the more hydroxide ions, the more negative they are, the more alkali there are. I'm sure there'll be some chemistry students out there saying I shouldn't say alkali. You're probably quite right, but not all biologists have to do chemistry, so I'm not going to be too accurate there. So hydroxide ions, OH minus. If we add this on to a proton or hydrogen ion, these are going to neutralize each other and we're going to make water. So these guys can be used to balance out too many hyd hydrogen ions in the blood and vice versa. So not too scary. Here we need to know roughly what these things are used for. Most importantly, you need to know that anions are negatively charged and like cations are positively charged. And as a result, um, they have different influences in the world of biology.